it's finally here the fabricator mini version 2 3d printer i got it direct from hobbyking.com to review at the channel i'm going to unbox it test it and give you my honest review on today's film of friday Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations from my Patreon supporters. Here's the parts included in the box. The Fabricator Mini Printer, Power Brick, Power Cable, Spool Holder, Sample Filament, USB Cable, Allen Wrench, and a little plastic scraper. Here it is fully assembled. All I had to do was connect the Bowden tube to the extruder and install the spool holder. And that was really it. From there I just slid in the SD card, the micro SD card, and then there's a switch. When you put the SD card in and power it up, the switch is orange. You press it, turns blue, and that indicates that it's going to start printing. And that's it. Press it once to pause it, press it and hold it for four seconds, and that cancels the print. But there's no indication of temperature or time or anything after that. So you really need to hook this up to a computer. And that's the way the original fabricator mini was this is my original fabricator mini 1.0 this was the same way it was designed to connect to a computer and control it from the computer and i got tired of that after a while and that's why i reflashed the board and this was open source so you could get to the firmware the marlin firmware i reflashed it uh, added an lcd a full graphics lcd with full size sd card a base so it could get air underneath it and cool the the stepper motors which was a problem this had small stepper motors and they would overheat and a spool holder and I designed this just for smaller spools I had a lot of these XYZ printing leftover spools from my DaVinci so it worked good for me and I was able to learn about open source and Marlin and how to get a good print and this had a E3DV6 clone in it which worked really well. So this was a great learning experience for me. And at $177 fully assembled, I bought this two and a half years ago. I really didn't expect a whole lot for that price, but man, did I, I was so surprised. So I got a deal and I still love this printer. I still use it. So when the Fabricator Mini 2 was announced, and that was like a year and a half ago, I actually saw an early video. And the one thing I asked them is to please include an LCD. Because that's what I learned with this. You don't want to always be connected to the print to a computer. And I wanted the LCD. And this didn't even have an SD card. At least this one has an SD card, but they didn't include the LCD. And that's where this guy comes in. This is the Malian M200, or also known as the MP Select Mini. And it's a cousin to this because if you look up Malian M100, you'll see the same printer. The only difference is this is rebranded as Fabricator Mini 2. Now, there may be other changes I just don't know about, but I did do a comparison of these two just to see how similar they are. They've got the same extruder, and this one has a plastic arm that's been known to crack. Same plastic arm. This has a hot end, which I really can't recommend. I use it, but I've had this thing running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for like 6 months printing something for my son. I've had to unclog this thing like five or six times. It's not the best hot end. Uh, I'm looking at changing this to an E3D V6. But it does have a little bit bigger build area and an LCD with SD card. So this one has the exact same hot end, but it's harder to get to. So if I have to take this apart and unplug it, that's going to be a real pain. So I'm not looking forward to that. The um, spool mount. This was interesting. It's got the same spool holder, but notice I've got a small spool on here. Let me show you why. Because I wanted to use a full-size spool. So here's a Kaleido uh, spool. This is actually Hobby King. I bought this at Hobby King. If I try to put this on, it hits the motor. If I lean it and put it on, it rubs against the motor. So you can't put a, put a full-size spool on this thing. I even tried a different spool. This is the uh, an inland. It's a little bit smaller. I can get it to go on if I angle it, but it still rubs on the motor. So now I think you'd have to print a new holder. I, I don't see how I installed it wrong. It just slides in. 
So I just used a small spool that I had. And that's what I used to print my sample print. Or their sample print. The amount of filament they gave me would not cover the sample print. So this is essentially useless. Um, it did print. And let me show you the results I got there. The SD card had a sample file labeled auto00.g, so I adjusted the bed, started printing it, everything looked good, so I walked away. And after I walked away, of course, it started printing spaghetti. So I had to come back, adjust the bed so that first layer would really stick down, and then I printed it again, and I got it to fully print, and here's the result. And the bottom of it looked really good. It was looking smooth, but as the lines got thinner and it got taller, it started to look rougher, like under extrusion, and a lot of stringing. And the tips really don't look that great. I don't know what the original file was, but for them slicing it and including this on the SD card, this was not an impressive print. Now there are some impressive features. Let me talk about those. There may be a reason they didn't include an LCD, and it could be because this guy is Wi-Fi capable. You can set this up to communicate via Wi-Fi. So that's a nice feature for a $200 printer. It's just not a nice feature for me. I personally would rather have an LCD and SD card. I've got Wi-Fi capability on my FlashForge Dreamer. I got it turned off. I don't use it out here in my shop. And the other thing is, if I just want to change filament, I can't just heat this thing up easily and change the filament. The, the way I have to do it is load a file, start printing it, and as soon as it starts you know, extruding plastic, I know it's hot enough, pause it, then I can change the filament. Now, if it's connected to Wi-Fi, I'm sure I can do that through the controls. It'll tell me temperature and where it's at. But if the Wi-Fi is in a totally another, another room, I have to then walk out, come out here, change the filament. That just seems, yeah, I don't know, hokey. That just doesn't seem right to me. Where an LCD would have given me that control or some kind of controls. Even if the, the switch would have flashed red or something saying, okay, temp, it's at temperature. Now I can do something. It just it was not to me thought out for a two hundred dollar printer to include Wi-Fi instead of an LCD. Now this does have a thirty two bit board, and I I took the bottom off just to check because I suspected it was the same as this guy because this has a thirty two bit board on it, and this does. It's basically got the same board if you if you look at the two side by side, they're the same board. So. That's nice. It's got capability that some bigger printers don't even have. And that's something the original Fabricator Mini didn't have. This was a, this is an 8-bit board. But what I liked about that is I could get the Marlin software, I could update it myself in Arduino, and I could add the LCD real easily. This guy, I don't know where the source code is. I've been looking for the source code for the Mayan M200 here can't find it you can update this people have updated you slide in a new an SD card with a new file and it updates itself so you don't have to connect to a computer to update it although there's some flaws in it because I've been able to brick two of these guys trying to do that so I don't even try to update them anymore um, some people don't have a problem I've had it multiple times so updating this guy I'm sure is possible just with an else with the uh, SD card maybe that's how they plan to add an LCD down the road but you can't get to it. I can't easily do it myself right now. So those are major drawbacks to me for a low-cost $200 printer. I, I have no interest in the Wi-Fi personally. Maybe other people do, but that to me was a bad decision. I would have rather have had an LCD than Wi-Fi. So overall, what is my opinion? I think it's got some nice features. This metal case, the bigger build area, the heated bed, those are all improvements of the original Fabricator Mini. Those are things people wanted. I wish it had a better hot end like the E3D, even if it's a clone. Um, I wish I could put a full-size spool on this guy. <laughs> and uh, I just wish it had an LCD. I mean, how many times I got to say it? To be fair, I will hook this up to the computer and play with it a little more and get that Wi-Fi working. I understand that Malian does have an app for a phone, so that could be the communication, you know, and control your printer from there. But from everything I could find, it's only an Android app, and I have iPhones. So I couldn't really test that, unless maybe I could do it through a browser. So that's going to take more time. I'll play with that, and if I find something out, I'll let you know. 
But for $200... $40 more at Hobby King, you can get this guy with a bigger build area and an LCD. I'd go with this. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of my other videos. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon goes a long way. And nothing else, please click on that logo and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Film of Friday.